Hi everyone, today we are covering the newly released POCO F6. And let's talk about the camera. And yes, I know there's an S6 Pro, but I didn't get that, so I can't tell you much about that one. I just know the specifications, and that's it. So, sadly, no POCO F6 Pro coverage so far. Either way, let's talk about how the camera performs. But before that, let's talk about the specifications for this POCO F6, because there are some things on paper that are actually looking really good for it. Not necessarily the camera. In terms of the main camera, we get a 50 megapixel resolution with an f-stop of 1.6 and according to GSM Arena, we get a 1 over 1.95 inch sensor size, which allows you to record up to 4K and 60 frames per second. Then we have an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor and this sensor we've probably seen a lot of times in phones like this. It's a 1 over 4 inch sensor size and here the max video recording is 1080p and 30 frames per second. And I think it's about time we move away from this specific sensor and these sizes, especially for phones like this, I feel like it can definitely do better. For the front facing camera we get a 20 megapixel sensor with an f-stop of 2.2, max video recording at 1080p and 60 frames per second, and no HDR, which you do have on the POCO F6 Pro, but I do not have that. Some other important things when it comes to this phone that are genuinely nice is that we get the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 inside. And here is the Geekbench score. We get 8GB of RAM up to 12GB of RAM and in terms of memory 256GB up to 512GB with UFS 4.0. For the display we get this standard 6.67 inch AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh rate and a peak brightness of 2400 nits. For the battery it's a 5000mAh battery and you do get that included 90W charging as well. However what is sadly not included is the headphone jack that is sadly now also removed on this phone. A real shame to see because last year we did have it on the POCO F5. In terms of water resistance, it's an IP64 and it runs on HyperOS and the version is 1.03 at the moment of recording. So let's now get to the part what I'm for, the camera performance on the POCO S6. And this has its ups and downs and some discussion is needed for it. But let's start at the main sensor. I will say here there is very little discussion to be had, the main sensor performs well. Sure, it goes for a bit more brighter shot and less contrast, something that I myself do not prefer. I like a little bit of contrast and a little bit of cool down in brightness, but in general shots coming from the main sensor are fairly well detailed and it does take some really solid shots. Sure, it's not a flagship experience, but overall the main sensor is able to capture shots that I find in general pleasing. And that is combined with the possibility to use different styles, where I often use the H400 which has a little bit more of a softer black and white and the V250, which goes for a little bit more of a dramatic filmic style. As well as in general, the camera does capture some nice depth of field in the shot itself. Now of course, recording in this weather probably isn't the nicest in terms of like how it looks, style, dynamic range and so on. But this weather does give opportunities in terms of creating shots, pebbles, having a little raindrop on it. Especially when you added shots, it's really nice. And even then, I think something like this Poco F6 will do you well. By the way, recorded on the front camera. I don't know it's shit weather, but shit weather also creates opportunities to create shots and flowers with raindrops on them. And really beautiful if you edit them as well. But I do understand that you might be wondering where is the discussion part that I had to have. Well, it comes down to the ultrawide. Yes, you can capture some pretty decent shots with it. It is able to sometimes have that little bit more contrast that I'm looking for compared to the main sensor. And yes, calibration can be pretty close in terms of colors between the main sensor and the ultrawide. However, this ultrawide does come at a cost. The smaller sensor clearly is not on the same level as the main sensor. And we're not talking about video recording, we'll get to that. Images can come over pretty soft and just lacking details in some shots. Yes, the ultrawide, as stated, can capture pretty decent shots. 
but just know that it isn't on the same level as the main camera and it definitely cannot compete with that main camera and video recording is one of those so let's showcase the video performance of the poco f6 in daytime okay daytime 4k 60 frames per second of course this can only be done with the main sensor and not ultra wide it's rainy so 4K, 30 frames per second. Now with the S6 Pro, you do have HDR or video recording. But this is of course not the Pro. Now the biggest thing is why I don't want this sensor anymore. This is the ultra right. Limited to 1080p and 30 frames per second. It does not compete with the main sensor, it should be at least 4K, 30 frames per second. And that's a bit of order, just ignore that, and there we go. But yeah, this is not great. You should be allowed to at least record 4K on this ultra wide, as in they need a different sensor, and then allow you to record 4K. And this is 1080p, 30 frames per second on the main sensor, a question if you can zoom out nope you cannot But now the question, how is the POCO F6 in low light performance? It's a bit of a mixed bag, dynamic range control isn't amazing and it can look a little bit noisy in shots like these, but in turn when it comes to the main sensor I would say it can take some pretty solid shots. Light control can be pretty nice as well as the contrast in the shot and in general if you play around with shots and angles and how you approach the photography on this phone or using other mode. Playing around with styles and so on, you can get shots that are actually quite solid. But again, you can also get shots that looks pretty noisy if you make it a lot harder on the phone itself. So with the main sensor, it's good, but you might want to take that second shot to get more out of it. That being said, if we move to the ultra wide, no one will be surprised to see that the ultra wide in most shots are quite noisy. And it just lacks details, great colors and proper processing of it. Again, not shocking when you look at how tiny the sensor is. Not to mention that it also takes longer to take these shots. And that is one of the reasons why I say we should step away from sensors like this. It would be beneficial for a phone like this to have either a better ultra wide or a better telephoto. Okay, 60 frames per second. Okay, 30 frames per second, main camera. seconds because it cannot go higher than that.
Right, front facing camera, low light, of course, 1080p limited, no 4K support for it. Seems pretty dark and grainy, but we'll see on the computer afterwards. So at the end, what do I think about the POCO F6 when it comes to the camera performance? Overall, you can take some really solid shots with it. The possibility to play around with different styles is definitely a key feature for me when it comes to mobile photography. Having the possibility straight away from your phone is important. It allows me to play around with it. With that being said, yes, the ultra wide definitely isn't one of those sensors that I want to see in phones like this. I think they can bump it up at least a little bit, get a 1 over 3 in sensor size in the 12 megapixels, at least allow 4K recording under this as well. I know with an 8 megapixel resolution, that's not going to happen, but just seeing an upgrade on that one would have been really nice. I think there it falters a little bit when it comes to the camera performance. When it comes to the main sensor, in stills, I think it's actually really solid. You get some good details from it. Shots that I've taken on it are very nice. However, I would say again that I would turn down the brightness a little bit. Lucky enough, you easily have the possibility, of course, with that EV slider, allowing that little bit more of darkness in the shot itself that for me is more pleasing. However, of course, that is my preference. And if you like a little bit of a brighter shot, then of course by default i think this will do you really well now when it comes to performance i think this phone is stellar it's snappy it goes through everything properly fast and of course when it comes to battery life battery life is also quite good and of course allowing you to charge at 90 watt with the included charger is definitely one of those important things for phones like this that being said it is a real shame to not see the headphone jack on a phone like this i know that Every brand is now trying to sell their Bluetooth headsets, but I think on phones like this especially, it's really important to have that headphone jack. Also on phones that focus a lot on camera, but that's beside the point. But I get it, you gotta sell your Bluetooth headsets, and that's what it is, and not for lack of space or anything like that that Apple gave us reason, because that really isn't the reason. And if you believe that, then I got an island to sell you. Either way, what do you think about the Poco F6? And no, there's a Poco F6 Pro. I didn't get it. They're not gonna send it to me. So if you wanna see that one, TK Bay, I know for sure has it, and probably one will have it as well. If they have their video online, I will put a link in the description where you can check it out. Remind me, I probably will forget knowing myself. But let me know what you think of the Poco F6. What you think about the camera performance on a phone like this, and do you agree? Should that ultra wide get an upgrade or not? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you do enjoy the video, don't forget to like the video. It helps out. Commenting below definitely helps out. And of course, if you aren't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe. We're getting closer and closer to the 8K. And then afterwards, closer and closer to 9. And then finally that 10K. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, talk to you guys in the next.